Hello everyone, this is TechBizmo, and welcome back once again to another video. Um, I thought I'd get a quick video out um, on the HP Envy X360, so I'm not going to do any face cams or anything uh, for this video. Um, rather, I'm just going to show you guys the laptop and the upgrade process. As you guys can tell by the title, this is going to be a RAM slash SSD upgrade tutorial for the HP Envy X360. Uh, well yeah guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is uh, grab a microfiber cloth. I always like to lay down a microfiber cloth on my desk or workspace, my work area, just so that I do not scratch the surface of my laptop. Then what you want to do is you want to, I mean, of course, I guess the first step realistically would actually be to shut down your HP Envy X360, but mine is already shut down, so next what you can do is flip your laptop over, like so, just lay down on the microfiber cloth. I'm trying to center this for you guys. Like so. Then what you want to do is uh, you'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver. In this video, I'm going to be using a, uh, let's see, a Phillips Zero. Uh, actually, let me see. Let me just grab a look here. Okay, actually, I'm going to be using a Phillips One head from my iFixit ProTech Toolkit. Um, as well as a Torx 5 bit, so you guys can see here, this is a, uh, uh, a bit that you can also find in the iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit. So while we have our bits, I'm going to, actually we'll keep this little tray out to, uh, to keep my screws organized. There's only a few screws to remove the outer casing, but uh, you will need it. Oh, also... You will need some kind of a prying pick. I do recommend using something plastic, like one of these guitar picks from the iFixit Protect Toolkit, or like what I'm going to be using, uh, the little plastic spudger prying end from the iFixit Protect Toolkit. Um, you could you could pretty much use whatever suits you, whatever works the best, and whatever does not scratch the outer casing of the the laptop. So, while we have our tools uh, nice and handy, we're going to uh, first loosen all of the Phillips head screwdrivers. So, you can do this however the heck you want, but we're just going to loosen all of these, like so, with the Phillips 1 screwdriver bit. Let's see, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Phillips head screws you will have to remove. Um, oh, also, uh, before you do this upgrade process, you may have to, uh, for me I didn't because mine rubbed off, but you will have to remove the two uh, long rubber strips, that, uh, rubber feet that are covering these screws. Um, yeah, as I said, in my case, I did not have to because they rubbed off over time, so it's pretty handy. <laughs> yeah, it's really not because I'm pretty much always... Uh, using my laptop on top of a cloth or something because I don't like to scratch the bottom nor the top of my laptop because I'm picky like that <laughs> alright yeah so just loosen all of the Phillips head screwdriver screws not screwdrivers <laughs> there'll be a lot of screwdrivers <laughs> All right, then what you want to do is get your Torx 5 bit handy and then remove the one Torx 5 screw here at the bottom. You guys can see there. Remove it just like that. And as you guys can see, I'm keeping everything nicely organized. There's not too much to keep organized, so it's, it's pretty easy to deal with. I, I do like the way that this case is held together because it's only held together by a couple of screws. Now what you want to do is you want to pry up carefully from the back hinges right here. So you can see where I'm sticking my spudger in and sort of wiggling it around a little bit. Then what you want to do is carefully start prying it up like so. And there you have the bottom cover of your HP Envy X360. This is a very nice cover. This uh, contributes to like... 25% of the overall structural integrity of the case of the computer itself. So uh, Yeah, you wouldn't want to go without the bottom cover because the case does actually flex a lot more without the bottom cover Which makes sense because that's how a lot of uh, computer manufacturers do it. That's uh, Even how Apple does it with a lot of their machines 
Alrighty guys, once you have gotten to this point in the uh, the video, uh, what you want to do is you want to grab your Phillips head screwdriver handy. Once again, I may actually need a smaller Phillips head screwdriver for this. Nope, looks like it's okay. I'm gonna keep these nicely organized as well. Yeah, so just uh, remove all these screws so that you can pull the battery straight out. I do recommend doing this just so you don't accidentally, you know, drop something and make a short on the motherboard. I have done that in the past. <laughs> That's like one of the one times I accidentally killed a computer when I was uh, disassembling it. Alright, then you want to lift the battery straight up from the back. Then just pull straight out. And there you have it, guys. There is my, what is this, a 55 watt hour. HP Envy X360 battery. And now what you want to do, <clears throat> since we've got the battery removed, I'm going to press the power button a few times just to discharge the capacitors. Now you can remove the, uh, the uh, what is it, the thermal transfer shield for the RAM modules. Just pull it straight up like so, and then we'll set that aside. Alrighty then, we have our two RAM modules. One of mine is 8 gigs, the other is 8 gigs. Um, so I have a total of 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. This is DDR4 RAM if you guys are unaware, um, which you should be aware because you know you're upgrading your HP NVX 360. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, first thing that you want to do when you're under here, let's actually have a look. Which of these is DIM A and which of these is DIM B? Alright, I'm not sure, but it's not really important. You don't really need to know. Um, initially, this machine came with 8 gigabytes of RAM. That was out of the box, because um, this is the i5-8265U model. Um, but then, a little bit later on, I swapped this out. I swapped that RAM out with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, crucial memory, uh, as opposed to the uh, Remaxel that came with it. Alrighty then, what you want to do here is slide the two clips out. And then the RAM module will lift itself up, and you want to just slowly back your way out. I say slowly, you don't really need to do it slowly. Just as long as you're careful, then everything should be just fine. I set that RAM module there. Then again, most of you guys will not need to uh, swap it out. Most of you, if you guys did what I did initially. Because um, first it came with an 8 gig dim, and then I just threw in another 8 gig dim. But then I took those two dims out and put it in my Latitude E7450, and I got these two dims for this machine. So these two, uh, slide these two clips out, and then pull the RAM module straight out. Try your best not to touch uh, the RAM or the contacts of the RAM. You can see those golden contacts there. Just try your best to only hold it by these sides. Let's go ahead and, uh, why not? Let's let's first go ahead and show you guys how to put the RAM back in. So take your RAM module, then just angle it in, slide it into the slot, and then press it straight down until you hear that click. Then dim number two, same thing. Just put it in an angle and press straight down until you hear that click. And that is how you install RAM in your HP Envy X360. Now, let's go over to the solid state drive over here and show you guys how to upgrade that. So it's held in by one Phillips head screwdriver, or one Phillips head screw right now. I apologize, I keep calling screw screwdrivers. <laughs> what you wanna do is you wanna back this screw out, like so. And then what this is gonna do, this is a non-volatile memory express solid state drive, so it's going to automatically lift itself up, you guys can see there. Don't be worried about that, that's part of the design. Then what you wanna do, just like with the RAM, you want to just back your way out. And there we have it, here's my 256 gigabyte Western Digital uh, non-volatile memory express SSD. Alrighty then, let's go ahead and get back into the installation of the solid state drive. Just go ahead and insert it at an angle, like just like with the RAM. Then grab your screw handy. It's nice to have a nice magnetic screwdriver for this. Then press your solid state drive down, straight down guys, uh, and then put your screw back in. Do not over tighten the screw because you can actually damage the PCB as well as the casing itself. Um, 
so yeah, just just be careful when you're doing that. Alrighty, um, so after you've gotten everything installed, everything upgraded, uh, for the RAM, what you want to do is you want to just put this guy back on. You want to center it with the metal clips, the grounding clips uh, that are all around the, the DIMM slots, the RAM modules, and then you want to press straight down. Just make sure it is set there nicely. And now, what you want to do, once you have everything nicely upgraded, everything that you want to mess with, or that you did mess with, nice and upgraded, you want to insert your battery at an angle, sort of like this. Then just let it fall straight down. And then, get your screws handy. And that's basically it, guys. You tighten these screws back up. If I can do that. Like so. Yeah, it's a very simple process, if, uh, as you guys can, can tell. I do enjoy making these RAM upgrades slash SD upgrade tutorials because, uh, you know, they're. I like teaching people how to do this stuff, but it's also very, very easy. A very easy thing to do. So it's, it's nice to learn how to do it and show others along the way, if you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah, make sure you don't over tighten these screws because this is just the battery clips are just or the battery. Yeah, I guess I guess I can say the battery clips, the battery, uh, what holds in the battery. Um, let's say the battery washers, I guess, are just made out of plastic. So you want to be careful not to over tighten or you can actually crack the plastic, which I have done uh, over here. The plastic is sort of cracked around there, but it's all good. It's all fine. Alrighty, we have the system completely assembled, the, in the interior completely assembled. Now, what you want to do is get your bottom panel, panel handy and sort of insert it at an angle from this side. You usually want to start from the back when you're doing uh, the, when you're uh, reinstalling the bottom panel on this laptop. And then just click it down everywhere that needs to be clicked down. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. Alrighty, let's go ahead and reinstall our seven Phillips head screwdriver screws. <laughs> you guys get to laugh at me while I'm doing this tutorial, aren't, aren't y'all? You're all laughing at me. Yeah, once again, be sure not to over tighten these screws, but it is, um, it does make sense to make sure they are tightened to an extent that they don't back out over time because, uh, I've actually noticed that, yeah, if I don't tighten these, uh, back screws, especially the ones that are holding the hinges as well, you know, where there's actual, actual, like, um, force on them over time, um, I've noticed that they actually do back out over time if you don't tighten them to the right extent. But it's also good to keep in mind not to over tighten them. So hopefully you guys get what I'm saying there. I apologize if I'm being a little confusing here. Oopsie, I dropped my screw, but I got it back. Alrighty, folks, there's all the seven Phillips head screws inserted into my laptop. Let's grab our Torx 5 bit, grab the Torx 5 screw, and insert it back from where it came from. Well, there we go guys, let's, uh, why not? Let's fire this bad boy up, make sure she posts. My escape key, there it is. See, I did actually take out the battery and the battery does act as the CMOS battery for this machine, so it is going to reset the BIOS to its defaults. But, yep, there we go. Yep, so what it says is, oh, okay, that error went away. All right, let's press the power button again. Yep, 
and yet it needs to do a few boot cycles before it can actually completely boot. Alrighty, here we are in the startup menu since I was striking the escape key. Let's go ahead and go to system information, which is F1. No. We want to go to BIOS setup, which is F10. And here we are. And there's the HP BIOS. I apologize that the screen is flickering. That's just a byproduct of the fact that this is a uh, LED backlit display. Alrighty guys, that is, uh, that's basically it. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you all found this video helpful and slash or useful. Uh, feel free to check out some of my other videos. That is youtube.com slash techthismail. Thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, yeah. As I said, it was a very simple process upgrading the RAM and SSD in the HP NVX 360. Well guys, stay tuned for more videos, uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.